Right on to the Rio Much Love to these haters. It's time for the Lakers. It's time for the Lakers. Right on to the Rio Much Love to these haters. It's time for the Lakers. It's time for the Lakers. Right on to the Rio Much Love to these haters. It's time for the Lakers. It's time for the Lakers. Man, what is happening, my YouTube family? Of course, it is your boy, B. New. I'm coming at you on this Saturday. And first and foremost, as always, want to send out positive vibrations and blessings to anybody who could be listening. Now, with all that being said, we do know that the Los Angeles Lakers were in action on yesterday, uh, downtown crypto.com arena uh, to take on none other than the Utah Jazz, who have surprised a lot of people uh, so far this season, considering the fact that they gave up Donovan Mitchell. But let me tell you something, this Utah Jazz team is proven so far early on throughout the season that they are no uh, joke, they no fluke, and that they are come to play some basketball. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. But, you know, we got some things to talk about as regards to the Los Angeles Lakers. But before I get into that, man, hey, go to FanDuel right now and take nine and a half plus Tennessee against them Georgia Bulldogs, baby, because this Vols for life. And let me tell you something, baby, Tennessee about to do that thing. If you were smart, you might take the straight up and really get the big money. But, you know, I'm just going to tell you straight up like this, you know, I got to go ahead and take Tennessee plus nine and a half to me. It's no way if Tennessee do lose, it's no way. It is no way at all that they're going to lose by that much, baby. Tennessee has been playing, and I, I, I'm just, I know this basketball, and we're talking about the Lakers, but I just had to take one moment off to let you all know that as a favor to everybody, <laughs> go get the money, because Tennessee is not going to lose by plus nine and a half, trust and believe me. So, anyway, I might think it in my head, damn, I shouldn't have said anything to Jigsaw, man, I might not even publish the video after the game, but now nah, I'm just tripping, I got faith in my boys, and they're going to do what they got to do, you know, it's Vols for life all day, every day this way. But anyway, back to what I was saying about these Los Angeles Lakers. So, man, I got to take, I got to take real quick that I got to let you all know is LeBron James' foot is messed up, man. LeBron James' foot, every day he's been listed as probable, whatever, and he has foot, left foot in the soreness uh, since the first game of the season. I'm not sure when he first injured it or what's going on with it. I don't know if he got some inflammation. I hope he was listening to me right now, and I would tell him to rub some black seed oil into that, and that would cure that. But, you know, I hope he doesn't end up with a stress fracture in his foot because that's what it's looking like with all that foot soreness, and you got to keep taking your shoe off and massaging in the pain. But clearly LeBron James doesn't have the lift, the takeoff, the speed, or anything, and it's not because of age, because he's been having that. He has the agility still, you know. And last night, even if you saw on his dunks in the fast break, open dunks, he, he usually much higher than that. And I'm telling you right now, some finishes at the rim have been very suspect. And I'm going to go ahead and let you all know, him and Russell Westbrook been switched places because Russell Westbrook out here hitting the threes, handling the business, and actually looks very well when he's playing with Anthony Davis. I mean, looks very well when he's playing with Anthony Davis. I'm just going to go ahead and be honest. So I'm not saying bitch LeBron James, but what I'm saying is LeBron James needs to maybe sit out for about a couple of weeks or whatever it takes to rest that foot, man, and get that foot healthy because you do not want to keep playing injured because if you're playing injured, then you're a detriment to the team because I'm telling you what, he's not making any threes. And LeBron James, he's not the best three-point shooter, but I'm telling you right now, when you have a sore foot and you're trying to jump and take a jump shot from that distance and the pressure you have to put onto your foot, I mean, and even when he's driving to the basket, you can tell he just doesn't have that quick first step, you know, that burst of speed is not there. You know, people saying he's not getting back down on defense. You know, that is the case. You know, he has been having COVID, and I'm not trying to make any excuses for him. But at this point, I just think, you know, Anthony Lonnie Walker is playing very well. You know, let these young players get involved because – from what I saw on yesterday, you know, even when the Lakers came back and was could have tied the game up and Austin Reeves, you know, had a, uh, you know, Austin Reeves had a uh, turnover uh, that really would have tied the game up, you know, leading down into the fourth quarter. But instead, you know, he ended up turning it over. And I remember LeBron James came back in. He had a couple of turnovers on some bad passes because you can tell. See, you, you think the foot doesn't have anything to do with passing, but it does too, especially those long court passes because you got to push off. You know, you're using your legs, you're pushing off, and your feet is what really stabilizes you when you're trying to make any kind of move athletically. You know, it's very important. And if you're having that much pain in your foot and you can't put the normal pressure on it that you normally do when you, you make these moves, then it might be time for you to sit down just for a little while until you can recover. Because like I said, 
you know, especially with if Dennis Schroeder come back. Then you have, you know, Pat Bay or Dennis Schroeder. You got Austin Reeves who's starting to play better, uh, you know, being more confident in what he can do. You got Matt Ryan who can, you know, he's not been too much of a detriment on defense. And the Lakers, speaking of which, I just want to get into last night a little bit, you know, they played a hell of a team. I got a lot of faith in what the Utah Jazz is going to be capable of doing. I think they're a dark horse, and I think they're going to finish top, at least top four or five in the Western Conference. But quiet as kept right now, you see the Golden State Warriors are what, three and five, three and six, or whatever they are. They lost, what, four or five in a row. And, you know, they set all their players for low management yesterday against New Orleans, which I found surprising, especially considering the, lose streak and the, the losing streak that they've been on. They have not won away from home this year, and no defending champion has ever uh, came out and lost 0-6 on the road. So, at the end of the day, you know, it's a long season. Nobody calling Golden State dead in the water, and I'm not calling the Lakers dead in the water, but this is becoming more and more of a young man's game. And Utah, I'm telling you, that Lori, uh, damn, y'all know who I'm talking about. The boy was hooping last night. The boy was hooping. I mean, he can hit threes. He can finish at the rim. He can go hard to the board. Man, I'm telling you that... that that boy was hoping. And then Jordan Clarkson, hoping. He's very much improved his isolation game, his pull-up game. I mean, he's always been a shooter, but his handles seem like they've gotten a lot better. And I'm not just saying that off one game. You know, that's just for me just seeing him develop over the years. He's become a great player. Then Vanderbilt, he's a hooper. Uh, Mike Conley, you already know the, the, the admiration and respect I have for Mike Conley. Haven't been a long time. Memphis Grizzlies fan and what, what Mike Conley meant to the Memphis Grizzlies organization, you know, with him and Zebo and Marcus Saul and Tony Allen and company for years, you know, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Conley jersey would be hanging in the Raptors, you know, I know they retired TAs and Zebos, but anyway, uh, back to what I was saying, you know, the Lakers, if they, they're going to play Utah again on Monday, so I don't know if LeBron James is going to play in this game because of his foot, because that'll be a back-to-back -back game because I'm pretty sure he's going to suit up and give it his all to go against Cleveland on, I think, Sunday afternoon. I don't know what's going on with these Sunday afternoon games, but Los Angeles feel like they've been having those a lot. So they're going to play Utah again right after that on Monday. Uh, maybe they can get a film session in after having played them and sure up some things because at times they were playing good defense, but a lot of those shots, and I think about it, and I just named all the players from Utah, then you got Sexton coming off the bench. Come on. And he money. He money on shots. You don't give him too much separation because the boy is hooping. And then being in the role that he's in, he doesn't have the, the franchise on his back. He coming in off the bench. You know, speaking of which, Russell Westbrook hitting threes last night, confident in the shot, getting downhill. You know, I, I started to question, you know, and I know it's LeBron James and he's a franchise player and, you know, who LeBron James is. But if you're not being effective, I'm not saying bench him, but maybe have a talk with him and let him know, look, LeBron. Let the other guys, let the younger guys see what they can do and hold it down. You know, we got this stretch coming up against the Kings. Uh, forget maybe Indiana, somebody like that. You know, we play some of these lesser tier teams. You know, just take a take a good week off and we can hold it down. Because I'm telling you, Westbrook and AD look great together. The lobs Westbrook was throwing to AD last night was, man, superb. You understand what I'm saying? And if Westbrook getting his confidence back, because I think a lot of what Westbrook was doing was a lot mental because he couldn't handle the pressure of playing with LeBron and playing with L.A. and that being his hometown and then just being so heavily scrutinized to finally, I guess, Coach Ham made him feel like, look, just go out there and play your game. You know, win or lose, it doesn't matter. I got faith in you to do what you got to do. You know, so he's adding some trade value to himself if ultimately they decide to trade him. But if he keep playing the way he is, then I think he, the Lakers might be smart in keeping him, especially if LeBron James can get healthy. Because I'm telling you right now, if LeBron James was healthy completely and Anthony Davis was healthy completely, which is sad to say it's this damn early in the season they already hurt, uh, they just need to get healed up, man. And, and if LeBron can get a rest for a couple of weeks and then, you know, let AD get a rest here and there, you know, to get that back right, then maybe the Lakers can pull something together. But... You know, last night, you know, every time they would get it close, Utah would go back on another run because the way they was just hitting those threes. And the Lakers have been playing better defense, and I think their rotations wasn't there because it was just so disheartening that the Jazz, and I forgive me for not pulling up the numbers. I usually, you know, pull up a stat line and go over there. But, you know, I was just whipping this morning because, you know, I'm out here, you know, taking care of some business and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, I just had to chime in on this because, I think LeBron James really needs to take some time off and get that foot healthy because 
if you own the floor and you're not an effective jump shooter and you're not an effective driver to the rim, other teams are really going to start to figure that out and really clamp down even more on LeBron James. And, of course, he's not getting the calls. I know he complained to the referee for, for quite a bit of time last night on one particular call when he was coming across the lane. But, you know, at this point in his career, he should be used to not getting brush calls. But then it's just funny because other teams – get those same calls. I mean, Utah got countless and ones, and I'm not complaining because the Lakers, I'm pretty sure, took more free throw attempts than the, the Jazz yesterday. But another thing I need to point out is that of Anthony Davis, you had 20 in the first half and you finished the game with 22. That's unacceptable. You know, you got to go out and establish yourself and call for that rock on that low block because there was really nobody last night who could have really defended you. There's no Jokic out there. There's no... Uh, Joel and bead out there. You understand what I'm saying? You, you you need to establish yourself. So hopefully LeBron can get his foot ready, man. He he says he got confidence, and then he turned his ankle too on a, on a move to the basket. So man, I just don't really know what's going on. But at the end of the day, man, I just think you know the best move would be for the Lakers to sit LeBron James just for at least a week or so, or however long it takes for him to get their foot healthy. Because if you're going to be out there and not going to be contributing to the wins then, you know, it's best to have somebody else in the lineup. And I think the Lakers' young core, the younger players on the team, I really, I, I actually like this young little squad. I like Lonnie Walker. You know, I think he has the athleticism to finish at the rim. You know, if he can get more confidence in the shot, he shot five for nine from three the other night. You know, he wasn't spot on yesterday, but you just got to build the confidence up. I think he's playing a lot better. Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of Kendrick Nunn at all. But with the absence of LeBron James, maybe he can step up and get more minutes. I just think he's too small, you know, and he's too much of a liability on defense right now uh, for the Lakers to sacrifice that. And, you know, uh, I just, you know, with Pat Bev and the Lakers defense, with Pat Bev and Anthony Davis, you have a defender. And then I think you can still have a Russell Westbrook and a Lonnie Walker in that lineup and maybe even a Matt Ryan because then you got Russell Westbrook with two different shooters to distribute it to. Westbrook can get downhill and make his own shot. Lonnie Walker can get downhill and make his own shot. Then you still got Pat Bell to play the defense. You got Anthony Davis to anchor the defense. Anthony Davis can definitely get his own shot. And then you got Matt Ryan who can go out and get the threes when you need a three ball from Russell Westbrook. I would like to see a lineup like that. And I think they could hold it down uh, to do what they need to do. You know, if Anthony Davis is this player that we say he is, and maybe the Lakers need to take a look at trading him because if he's not going to be that corner franchise player that can go out there and get you victories night in and night out, then what the hell is he even doing here? So at the end of the day, man, this your boy B. New. I'm saying right on to the real and much love to these haters. Bye-bye.